My friends, can you beat this video game without doing this thing that you would think is absolutely necessary to beat said game? Well, it's about time we put together one of these for GoldenEye, so let's investigate. Can you beat GoldenEye 007 for the Nintendo 64 without shooting? Alright, so for the sake of this video, we'll try to beat Goldeneye on the game's easiest difficulty, Agent. And beating it would mean starting on the first level, Damn, and playing through until we get the credits, which play after completing Cradle. This means that for this context, we won't be playing the bonus missions Aztec and Egypt, which I'll tell you now are indeed beatable without shooting. But what about the other levels? Well, I recently turned on the game attempting to beat it without shooting, without having had any plans or ideas of strategies for some of the more challenging areas in the game, and this is what happened. So we'll start out on Dam, a pretty simple level, you just strafe around, not much to it, and you know what, we'll return to Dam a little bit later. Facility is next, it's not too hard. We have to manually activate a console a couple of times in order to open some doors. Doors that we would normally shoot to attract guards to open themselves, but it's all pretty straightforward stuff and no real risk of dying. At the end of Facility, however, we're met with semantic number one. Is throwing mines shooting? Intuitively, you may want to say no, but in the context of Goldeneye, mines are just as much a weapon in your inventory as any firearm, and you press Z to throw them, the same button as shooting. Okay, mines still probably aren't shooting, so we throw these mines on the bottling tanks at the end, complete the objective, and bingo bango, facility completed without shooting. Runway is cake, even the world record speedrun strategy doesn't shoot. I slapped these two guards out of an abundance of caution since they're the ones who often fire down the runway and destroy your escape plan. Either way, easy peasy, runway completed without shooting. Surface 1 gets a bit interesting. Traditionally, we have to shoot off these four locks at the end of the level. So how can we avoid doing this? Well, there are three spawning guards who cycle through the level, but they don't start spawning immediately on Agent. The easiest way to activate their spawn, however, is by going into this hut, ending this guard, and then running around to the other side of the level. Now that we've found spawning guards, they have a chance to pull grenades, so we just have to do a dance with them until they pull one. Something that has a 4.3% chance of happening with every new animation. They start a new animation after they shoot and then reset to a neutral position. So without waiting too long, we get a grenade. We slap the guard before he pulls the fuse on the nade, then we carry on through the rest of the mission, use the grenade to blow up the locks, and bingo bango, surface one completed without shooting. Bunker 1 is cake again, the world record speedrun doesn't even shoot, so we just use that strategy and easily complete the mission. Silo is fairly challenging, there are a lot of guards, but you're in no real serious danger of dying at any time. You have to be careful with the scientists though, if more than two are tragically game-ended, you fail the mission. Usually we'd shoot to make noise to lure guards to open locked doors, but now we have to collect the key cards from scientists throughout the level. Standing really close to them and invading their personal space usually does the trick. Avoid the scientist casualties, snap a picture of this satellite, and off we are, completing the mission. Frigate is simple enough on paper, but the hard thing is freeing hostages. Once you're in the field of view of a hostage taker, you only have a couple seconds to shoot him before he ends the hostage. Also, if you do get there fast enough, your slapping hitbox is quite large, so you'll often end up slapping the hostage if you're not careful. I messed up the first three hostage encounters, but these two hostages in the lower deck are in small enough rooms where it's easy to free them by slapping, and on Agent, we only need to free two hostages. So there we go, then just move through the rest of the level, get to the chopper, throw the tracking bug, and there's Frigate, completed with no shooting. 
Surface 2 is another piece of cake where even the world record speedrun does not shoot. Just strafe to the communications tower, throw the mine to destroy the communications link, go to the end of the level. The next couple levels are also pretty easy. Bunker 2, use the watch magnet attract to escape your jail cell, slap the guard for the key to free Natalia, then run around, collect the GoldenEye VHS tape, slap this double clob guard for a key card, and then run to the exit. Statue, there's no need to shoot at all. Most speedruns only shoot once to do a trick that saves six seconds at your encounter with Trevelyan. And he even asks you to go to unarmed, so there you go. There are so few guards, and most of them run away from you after you start speaking with Valentin, that this is just a normal run-through of the level. Obviously, I'm skipping a lot of gameplay here, so if you do want to see the run in its entirety, there is indeed a link in the description for 40 minutes of pure GoldenEye, no shooting, slappers only, in-game sound, ASMR bliss. Oh, and while I'm on the topic of redirecting you elsewhere on YouTube, if you're one of those viewers who is still wondering, where is Speedlore? Well, it's moved to this new channel called Speedlore, where I upload all the new episodes and have them all neatly organized in playlists. So subscribe over there if you love Speedlore. Alright. On Archives, I knew I'd need to get a guard to pull another grenade in order to destroy the glass we need to break to escape the stage, something we usually do by shooting. But I didn't know which guards pulled them. So I went down to Mishkin, a place you'll sometimes get grenade pulls on Double O Agent, but I didn't get one, possibly because from a lack of shooting I didn't attract many guards to begin with. So then I went to this courtyard and immediately had a guard pull a grenade, but he was too far away for me to get there in time before he pulled the fuse and it blew up. But then I figured maybe these two guards across the yard can also pull them, and what do you know? They did. So then I went upstairs, broke the glass before rescuing Natalia out of an abundance of caution to avoid her passing away in the flames. Then I went to get Natalia, left the stage, and there you go, archives completed without shooting. Streets brings up semantic number two. Is driving the tank shooting? Okay, probably not, and the level can be easily completed by just strafing to the end. But I hadn't really gotten in the tank in a few years, so I figured this would be the perfect occasion. Now as an aside, the tank record on Agent is actually 1 minute 17 seconds, only 6 seconds slower than the world record of 111, where we just strafe to the end. So I thought, wouldn't it be crazy if we discovered some sort of way to incorporate the tank into the world record speedrun? It's certainly an understudied field, so who knows, maybe eventually we'll find something. Regardless, I easily drove the tank to the ending, no issues, streets completed without shooting. Depot is quite literally a run to the end level and you can do so without encountering a single guard, by far one of the easiest levels in the game. Train brings up semantic number three, and this one is a little more contentious. Is using the watch laser shooting? Because if it is, then no, you can't beat Train without shooting. Train is one of two levels along with Dam where guards never pull grenades. This means you must use your watch laser or something you pick up from a guard like a ZMG or a D5K to destroy the Train's brakes, objective A. You also must destroy the locks to exit through the escape hatch at the end of the train, and explosives don't work on this anyways, so it requires using a firearm or your watch laser. So if you don't count the watch laser as shooting, then you can just play through the level like any speedrunner using only the watch laser, and indeed complete the level without shooting. But if you do consider it shooting, then I suppose our journey ends here. Jungle with Control are definitely the two trickiest levels in this quest. I started out by figuring I'd slap a few guards for their AR-33s and throw remote mines at the drone guns, but I realized that you only start with six mines and there are seven total drones, so we need to get a grenade somewhere. We'll find out where later. Luckily there are a bunch of body armors here since health does become an issue, and now here's the hard part, the fight with Xenia, an objective on the stage. She has a lot of body armor, 
So while your slaps do damage, she doesn't get stunned or react to it at all for the first while. I had to retreat after a little slapping to find more body armor. Luckily for us, Natalia does have a Magnum on this stage and does use it to shoot guards, or Xenia, which can help remove her body armor. However, Xenia's grenade launcher can be dangerous for Natalia. In any matter, she eventually took enough damage, I survived the fight, and moved on to the latter part of the level. Now I needed to find a grenade, and luckily as soon as I turned this corner, a guard pulled one. This area is kind of a hot spot for nade pulls, but I was lucky to get one so quickly. I went up the ladder, threw a mine at the second last drone, then the nade at the last drone, completed objective A, and just had to run to the end to complete jungle without shooting. Control. This one is also quite challenging, especially once you reunite with Natalia and have to protect her while she's hacking the GoldenEye satellite. So I took care of most of the mainframes and got a body armor before even getting to that part. Then once she starts hacking, you have two guards who will always try to come and defeat Natalia, and two guards wearing black hats who will try to come and defeat you. So you need to prioritize the guards who will go after Natalia while tanking damage from the hat-wearing guards for most of the protect. Also, if guards who go after Natalia break the glass on either side of the control center, you don't have much time to get over there and start slapping. Guards simultaneously breaking the side glasses would probably be an automatic fail, since there'd be no way to rid both of the guards before they could fire enough at Natalia. But as challenging as this might have been, I did barely manage Natalia finished her hacking, I watched her run back towards her ending, got another body armor, and then finished the mainframe objectives. Ran to the end, bingo bango, there's control agent completed without shooting. Caverns is another easy one, you don't really need to shoot at all anyways, just run to the end. I got stuck behind Trevelyan on this run, so I had to open a few of these slow doors manually, but you always catch up to him on the spiral. Just keep on running to the end, caverns is no problem. And now we've arrived back at Cradle. Right off the bat you take a lot of damage from the guard down the catwalk who can fire at you unimpeded, so I thought better of it and went to get a body armor. Then I knew once we got near Trev's hut, we could stand in this spot for the Trevelyan self game end strategy where he drops a grenade on himself, completing objective B, settling the score with Trevelyan. Sometimes this grenade can also destroy the console, which is objective B, but it didn't happen this time. So now I realize I needed to get another grenade. Now here's the thing with grenades. Guards who are dual wielding weapons cannot pull nades. Only guards who are holding one weapon can. So I had to run back up the cradle and find one of these guards, which took a couple of guards. Slapping away a dual wielder means a new guard will spawn and he could be a single wielder, capable of dropping grenades. Eventually I found one, I did the dance with him until he pulled a nade. You can see the timer in the middle of the screen counting down. If that time were to expire, Objective A fails. So luckily this guard pulled a nade with more than a minute to spare. With this I could run back to Trev's hut, throw the nade at the console, complete the objective, run off, complete cradle, and thus the game of Goldeneye without firing a single shot. Truly remarkable. But wait, let's go back to damn. I skipped this intentionally because it really is the climax of the whole challenge. Halfway through the dam you are presented with this locked gate. Now remember, dam is one of two levels where guards can't pull grenades, and there are no other explosives, so you can't break the lock with those. While on some other missions guards can destroy things like computer consoles, you can clearly see guards shooting at me from behind, their shots hitting the lock, yet the lock doesn't break. We've looked at the level with all available technology and never found a way to clip or warp through the gate, 
and this is probably the most studied level in all of Goldeneye. The only way to get through this locked gate is by shooting the lock yourself. You can beat the entire game of Goldeneye with only one shot fired, and it's at this gate. It's insane how we can get through the other 17 levels without firing a single shot, and the one place where it's absolutely needed, no matter what, is this very simple locked gate on the game's first stage. So no, you cannot beat Goldeneye without firing a shot, but you can beat it with one shot. Now beating the game on double O agent without firing a shot, that's a much more complex issue that would need even crazier strats on most levels, but that's a story for another time. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. It's not exactly the type of thing I usually make, but if you did, maybe I'll have a look at Double O Agent sometime. Thanks for watching, my friends. Stay true, and I'll see you in the next stream or video.